Hello, Mr. Barson here, and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to return to one of my all-time favourite resource authors on TES, but please forgive me because he's actually produced a new string of resources, a new series of resources that I'm more than a little bit in love with. So I think you will be too, so hopefully you'll forgive me for that one. The author, of course, is, and I'm not so sure I'm saying his name right, Alatwichi. I mean, I've been using his stuff for about 10 years now, but I don't think I'm saying it right. But anyway, what a wonderful resource this is. Expanding Bracket Spiders. And this forms a whole series of these spider style resources. And they're just wonderful. Let me set the scene. Imagine you want to practice expanding and factorizing brackets, maybe single brackets, then moving on to quadratics. Perhaps you've just taught it to your year seven or eight, or maybe you want a uh, an interesting way of revising it with your year 11s. This is just fantastic for consolidating understanding. Far better, in my opinion, than just having a, a, a worksheet full of, of examples. Just wait to see these. So if I crack it open, it is a PowerPoint file with um, each different uh, worksheet on a separate slide. So here's your first one, expanding bracket spider. Now look at this. You start with the, uh, the kind of term inside the bracket in the middle, and then round this outside are all your terms on the outside. So the idea with this first one here, we've got a two X and we've got a times it by X plus three, and then we fill the answer into that particular box there. All well and good, all fa fairly straightforward so far. But here's the beautiful thing. Sometimes you get given the answer and you've got to figure out what that term would be. Now that for me adds an extra layer of complexity and an extra layer of depth to this activity. But yet still, it doesn't look too intimidating for the students. It's still on this single sheet. It's still gonna, it's still gonna be quick for you to mark. Talking about marking, he's only gonna put the answers in as well. Absolutely ideal. So there is your sheet for developing the basics, I guess, of expanding uh, single brackets. Then we step it up a bit. So now we've got a minus inside here. Uh, we're starting to get a three A's. So we've got an extra coefficient. We've got A squared there. Can students fill this particular one out? And again, can they work backwards? What would need to have gone on the outside to get there? And it continues like this. Then we get into the realms of double brackets. Now, this first one here is just a simple case of expanding in double brackets but we have a little twist we've got a 2x there how are students going to cope with this and it's my belief that if this is all presented on one sheet of paper like this and crucially if this term is constant um, throughout all the examples students start to spot relationships and make connections it reminds me in a way of the kind of activity that Don Stewart would do on his medium blog which everybody knows I flip in love and it's just yeah it's just ideal for, for for students spotting those connections, but getting this key purposeful practice that they need. I'll just show you how it progresses. So we get the answers there. Then we get more double brackets, but this time look at this, n squared times by an n. So we're starting to even to get in the realms of new GCSE spec, just making sure students can expand slightly weird things like that. Then we're getting into this, what a wonderful one this is. So again, given that a plus four is a factor, can students factorize each of these? So it's a rapid practice of factorizing, building up to things like this. And it's nice this because often these techniques are taught separate to these ones when, when things haven't got a coefficient in front of the, the square term. But I like this because it's all on the same sheet. You can encourage students to move around at a pace they're comfortable with. And yet then when they start to see different things like difference of two squares, and that coefficient there, I reckon they're going to be more likely to be willing to have a go at it and probably more likely to be successful because they've started to spot patterns all the way through. They've built up their confidence and so on. And it carries on. I mean, look at this. Then we get, <laughs> that's beautiful, right? What's going on there? Why is this blank in the center? So this time students, an extra degree of complexity, can they find the common term and so on? And then probably my favorite, well, not my favorite bit of this because it's all flipping good. We then get this at the bottom here, a nice blank one. So perfect, give it to students, create your own spider. There's your homework, can you create one? Give it to the person next year, can they complete it? Can they spot any mistakes and so on? Wonderful, wonderful uh, set of resources. And as I say, this is just the tip of the spider iceberg. Loads of them floating out there. You'll see them on related resources or just Google them. Um, and I'll try and feature some probably in a newsletter, maybe a spider special, something like that. Anyway, wonderful resource. If you use it, hop back onto this resource review page, fill out uh, your review, let us know what you think of this. And I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.